This is the Corn Belt, a quarter of a million square miles of fertile land extending from central Ohio west to central Nebraska and from southern Minnesota south to central Missouri. The biggest piece of fine farmland in the world with a good agricultural climate, a land of corn and hogs and a hundred other crops to feed the world. That's why the United Nations look to the Corn Belt today for a good part of all the food they need to win the war. A hundred crops to beat the axis. That's going to put a strain on our land. But we can do it. We've got to do it. We did the same job the last war. We used mass production. We grew corn and wheat and other crops on every acre we had under the plow. And then we broke out new land with fine straight furrows. We thought that was the right way to farm in those days. We had to break out new land, or we thought we did, to grow the food that Uncle Sam had to have. And after the war, we kept right on. Farming was getting to be big business, and we went in for expansion. We did a good job of it, and we were proud of our farms, proud of our production. Of course, when it rained, that was another story. Naturally, a lot of topsoil washed away. The furrows ran straight and true up and downhill all right, but the topsoil ran only one way. Many a good field was cut by gullies, and sheet erosion ruined a lot more. We began to notice we had to work harder, use more fertilizer to get a crop. Then we began to realize that maybe we hadn't been doing such a good job of farming after all. We hadn't been taking good care of our land. We found the topsoil washed downhill and dropped as silt won't grow corn. Poor land means poor crops and poor farmers too. And a lot of us were getting poorer pretty fast, what with low prices and sick land. In the last 10 or 15 years, quite a number have moved on trying to find new places and good soil. You can't make a living out of gullies. Today, we're doing things differently. We're all working together to produce the right amounts of the right crops on time. We're making our farm program work. We're using conservation farming methods, taking better care of our soil. That's the only way we'll meet our food production goals the only way we can raise the food the United Nations need. Take terracing and contour cultivation, for example. They stop erosion, but they do more than that. By holding the topsoil, fertilizer, and water on the fields, we get bigger yields per acre. Bigger yields per acre now, when we need them most. On pasture land, furrows hold the water and make better grazing. Earthen dams are easy to build and useful. They hold back water. They make stock water pools and store water for irrigation if it's needed. And grass. We're growing more grass all the time because it's a crop as well as a conservation measure and good grass pasture is a good, inexpensive way to feed hogs. A lot of us are planting cover crops between the rows after the corn's been cut. Then we plow it under. It's a soil conditioner. That's one way to build up rundown land and keep good land good. Simple and easy and good conservation farming.
That's the sort of thing conservation farming is, after all. A big thing that helps us do big things. But some of the best practices are as simple and easy as ABC. Like putting manure and fertilizer and lime on the fields. These simple practices are important to America and the United Nations, especially now. We found we can get more corn per acre, more soybeans, and more of just about everything we grow using these simple conservation practices. This means that if we use these methods generally, we'll surely meet our Food for Freedom goals. Food for Freedom, that's a good slogan a battle cry for the farmers of America. And it makes sense, too. If we want to win this war, we've got to be strong, tough, and husky. So we've got to produce food, and a lot of it's got to come from the Corn Belt. We've got to grow more corn. We've got to grow more soybeans. We need soybeans for all kinds of food products, for salad and cooking oils. We've got to grow more beans, more tomatoes, more onions, more of all kinds of vegetables and fruits. produce more milk and more butter too and more dried milk to ship overseas and more cheese an important concentrated food more eggs too they dry them now to ship across the ocean but they're still eggs and taste mighty good to a hungry man We need more meat, more beef and more pork for soldiers, sailors and civilians. Something that will stick to their ribs and keep them strong and husky. Food is an important part of the material of war. And since the only way we can produce the added food we need is through conservation farming methods, that's what a lot of us are doing because we've got to keep them growing. We've got to keep them rolling by the train load and by the ship load. We've got to send food all over the world. Food for the United Nations. Food for freedom. Here are some of the boys who are standing guard and fighting for us here and on the other side of the world. They look husky, and it's our job to help keep them that way by growing the food they need. We've got to keep our bombers flying, too. That takes men, and men need food. Those strips curving around the hillsides are a symbol of the new conservation farming that is helping the farmers of America produce. While men in flying fortresses are doing their job, farmers are doing theirs. All over America, more and more farmers are using conservation methods to produce the added food we need to keep them flying and fighting 
food for freedom.